Thanks a lot, Michael. How's everybody doing? Good. All right. Uh, let's start at the beginning. OK, uh, so as Mike mentioned, I'm the technical co-founder of Lofty. We connect people searching the web with lawyers in their local region. Uh, usually, I only get about a minute to give the pitch, so people will often walk away thinking we're some kind of SEO company or some kind of ad agency or who knows what. But uh, fortunately, Alexi you know, and, and company, they gave me all of 20 minutes. So I hope to get into another level of detail to really kind of describe some of the technical challenges that we have and how they are uh, sort of interwoven with the user experience with the, the people problems. And so I'll kind of be bouncing back and forth between non-technical and technical uh, and describing a lot of these challenges and how we've overcome them. Uh, so, yeah. um, so, so the problem that, that we addressed um, when we got started about three years ago was was this was happening already, right? I don't need to you know, preach to the choir in the echo chamber uh, about how the digital disruption has already happened. You know, using data and mobile system, you know, data systems and mobile technology to uh, you know, acquire customers in mass, uh, create massively scalable systems. You know the drill. Um, however, um, when I partnered with my co-founder uh, Todd, a, a litigator, you know, I started talking about a lot of these things, and, and it was it was really really foreign to him. He, you know, saw the need for a lot of this to come to the, the legal industry, uh, and you know, here we are. You know, three years later, um, and we've just introduced the you know the law track here at Data by the Bay. So I think that's a it's a pretty big uh, milestone for us. Um, the uh, I thought that uh, you know I sort of credit IBM for kind of summarizing all this recently and uh, decided to cite them here. But it, it really states succinctly really where where we where we kind of stand today. And and it's not that it's coming; it's it's actually already here. Uh, but so so but what about the legal industry, right? Um, uh, Highly, you know, diversified into different uh, niches of, of practice areas, and, and uh, each state regulates what you can and cannot do independently. And so, um, this presents a challenge uh, both culturally within the within the law and uh, with um, regulations. And, and you know, when we think about digital systems and scaling, um, well, you know, 50 states is it's not a it's not a hard problem, but um, when you deal with both people problems and uh, the, the data and the integration problems, uh, it, you know, can, it can create quite a challenge. And uh, I think we've made plenty of progress since, uh, since we got started. Uh, we, we're primarily focused on client acquisition and scaling businesses and things, but um, there's a lot of, lot of work done by you know, folks in this room and, and folks at uh, Stanford Codex, which we, uh, we have friends over there, uh, that, that have made significant progress in, in legal, but um, you know, the work work's still cut out. Um, so, so my talk uh, here, I'm going to be uh, kind of trying to generalize a little bit because I know not everybody here is in law. So um, I kind of sort of pose the question of, of, of what about local businesses, right? So like law is a, a, a certain intermediate scale for, for a lot of law firms, um, you know, small, medium, large. It's not exactly things that you can throw big data at. Um, and I think some of the, the parallels exist for you know the, the hundreds of thousands of, of and millions of you know um, local businesses that are starting to really um, bring in analytics and use data at at this kind of a scale, right? So um, you know I, it's good that you know sort of the, the term big data has fallen a little bit out of favor um, because it doesn't quite capture a lot of uh, what these types of businesses are looking at. Um, but you will see that Google is now starting to sort of introduce this this sort of consumer analytics. Uh, popular times type thing, uh, and, and it's unclear to me whether uh, businesses like this um, have yet to start using this, but, but the opportunity is there. They didn't actually have to do anything to get some of these analytics, which they might be able to apply to, say, their staffing problems or um, you know, operations and that sort of thing. Uh, this was sort of a little bit of a throwback to my, to my previous startup where uh, my uh, co-founder, Corey, and I would go uh, to bars and restaurants in Manhattan, and we'd install essentially a data acquisition system streaming video. Um, and, but they had very, very basic needs of you know, when do we staff our bar, and when do we do this, do that, when, and weren't quite ready for it. Um, fast forward here, I think the, you know, the, the, the barrier to entry has certainly dropped for uh, small teams, smaller budgets, 
um, less sophistication, you know, not necessarily hiring a whole bunch of data scientists to, to really be able to op optimize your, your operation. Uh, okay, so three parts of my talk, the click, the inquiry, and the intake case. So um, we built a digital system that focuses on uh, really tracking and uh, crafting a user experience from the clicks through litigation all the way into settlement. Uh, there's really nobody in our industry that, that I've, I've run into that um, is interested in really um, sort of creating that and tracking that from start to finish. There are a lot of people that have made uh, you know, progress on different phases of the user experience, but we, at Lofty we kind of take this uh, holistic approach to, to from start to finish. Um, and uh, I guess mostly I'll be talking about some of the dynamics around the clicks and uh, what we do to uh, scale up uh, client acquisition at the start of the, of the experience. Um, the benefit there is that we'll start to see uh, cross-domain optimization, so uh, things that are happening offline and data that we're collecting from offline activity uh, to really optimize for our upstream activity, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting. There's a sort of another slant, and that's um, uh, you know uh, with the regulations and everything in, in law, there, there are very clear guidelines of what you can do, uh, what you can put on a landing page, for example, is, 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 is pretty strictly um, sort of regulated, uh, what you can say on the phone, how you represent yourself, everything. So if you actually are the same uh, database, same house, looking at, you know, from the start all the way to the finish, that gives you the opportunity to do right by the, uh, by the client. The, these clients are coming to us in time of need, and we have a, you know, we sort of have, we have an obligation to them to uh, represent the information very accurately and, and very, you know, truthfully. And uh, when you do what the industry normally does, and send it out to you know an ad agency to do your or a SEO company or a, you know a digital media agency they there's there's a certain amount of the the ethical uh, obligation that's that's lost in translation so we hope to bring that um, you know similar to what Eric was talking about that kind of user empathy uh, at the at the personal level from from start to finish um, certainly is is an ideal and it's hard to achieve but um, okay so let's dive dive into the data a uh, quick little introduction um, a lot of folks actually don't really know the difference between paid search and, and organic stuff, and so we get into conversations about that a lot. Just suffice it to say that you know it's ads or organic placement. Um, some of the terminology that, that we're focused in on optimizing um, when you do a Google search, like for example, this person, you know, I need a lawyer really, really bad. <laughs> um, you know, you get like four ads up top, and uh, many of you are probably familiar that Google has now really up to that on the desktop side of things to where, you know, this is my whole screen, right? I'm, I'm getting all ads before I even start to scroll from a user um, experience and analytics thing. This is, this is a pretty big deal, um, getting, getting exposure to this, this many ads. Um, and, it's, and it's a high stakes game because these, uh, these keywords are, as, as most people know, like legal keywords are extremely expensive. And so um, we'll get into kind of the, the challenges using data science, data science that we've overcome there. Uh, this is what it looks like on mobile. Usually you do a mobile search and you get all ads um, you know, above the fold here. All right, so uh, first thing, first challenges we overcame, looking at just the clicks, how do we get uh, client acquisition at scale? Um, most of the features in paid search kind of follow this bowed curve here. Like, uh, so what you're looking at here on the, on the X is how much we invest into ads and on the Y you're seeing in the red cloud how many clicks we get. And this, you know, by machine learning is, is pretty easy to model, right? It's, it's not linear, but it starts to tail off here. So we use, uh, you know, um, use some linear regression there to, to, to look at things in mass. And um, that did pretty well, but it didn't actually do um, as well as, as we would have liked. So then you sort of take it one level further um, and do some additional modeling. Now, it's important to note that I talked about the cost here earlier of getting these clicks on this scatter plot. Um, at, the, at a good value and volume. And so I've defined here uh, a high value region where you can actually bid pretty low for most keywords and get some level of activity. Um, but oftentimes you're not getting the volume that you're interested in. So uh, there's a high value region, high volume region. So uh, this is a challenge in both natural language processing to come up with your set of keywords to uh, create these, these models. Uh, but it's a, mostly a bid optimization problem from our perspective. Um, 
the fun stuff of targeting these ads into geographic regions by device by time of day. Um, so I think that um, you know the big part is uh, getting that efficiency and driving those clicks is actually a uh, emphasis on a few of these issues, optimizing landing pages, developing negative keyword sets, a bunch of additional um, benefits that you can do there. But this actually isn't that interesting, right? Like you get an efficiency boost. This is kind of what everybody's doing. The really interesting part is when we start to look at modeling of what happens next, which is the call. People are calling us uh, different times a day with different needs, and so then things start to get a little bit interesting. We start to model the call activity against the, the clicks, right? So not all clicks are equal, and uh, what we've been able to observe is some pretty interesting trends with uh, converting clicks into actual uh, legal cases and people signing up for, uh, for the services. So um, lo and behold, there's actually, uh, so what you're looking at here is a seven days uh, time span. And uh, on the y-axis, you're looking at, like, uh, at the conversion from click to actual inquiries. We say calls, but there's, there's, there's a few other ways that people can inquire online through chats, through form submissions, that sort of thing. But we actually see like a stark contrast between certain times a day and others where you know, we get four times the likelihood of turning a click into a case uh, at these times and uh, very low likelihood down here. Well, uh, and then interestingly enough, uh, you see this downward trend where people start really winding down for the day. And then so I think we sort of coined the term the after dinner spike that we see uh, later in the day. And it actually is pronounced most prominently on Fridays. There's a huge after dinner spike where we get a whole bunch of phone calls. And so we put that back into the ad optimization to get, to get our benefits. So um, as you know, not all clicks are equal. And we're also looking at uh, geographic optimizations. Um, but the key point here is that we have to link the activity. So if somebody calls us, we have to link that back to the original click. Uh, so we developed a, a system to actually attribute one for one these clicks to calls by delivering unique phone numbers. Thanks to you know, the API integrations with Twilio, phone numbers, um, spinning up new phone numbers and configuring them is, is something that you can do programmatically. So we actually serve out each session a, a unique phone number um, and rotate through uh, some expiration. But uh, realistically, uh, we were able to do that uh, a few years ago. Um, but then um, Google actually introduced that as a feature. You can actually put it as an HTML tag and, the, and they'll put on your landing pages a, a unique phone number. But, but we had it first, so <laughs> that's cool. Um, OK, I have a, a quick demo of um, the landing page experience. Uh, we built out a system that um, allows you to uh, replay visitors. Uh, that's not the other full screen. So you're going to be looking at a replay of my replay, or of our team's replay system. But I'm, I'm essentially, let me see if I can configure this. OK, so we, we put it on higher speed. But it's essentially, uh, we built out this landing page and the system that allows you to see the, the actual user experience and see how they're engaging with the page. Um, and the goal here is to um, really build that, that, that true empathy of actually watching the person engage with your content. Uh, allows you to, to find different ways of optimization um, beyond what you can do with, like, say, an Optimizely or uh, some other landing page type stuff. Um, so yeah, so this person went down. They kind of read some of our, of our uh, Spanish landing page content. We knew what they searched for, which was uh, Bufete Abogados, uh, and this actually turned into a, a case that one of our law firm partners in New York um, you know, acquired this as a client. This person as a client, and we can go back and use this scale of, of analytics to try to repeat this, make this repeatable and a little bit more precise. All right, so the, the point with this slide here is, is um, right, right now in the industry, 
Uh, there's still, still a lot of account managers on, on, on staff right now for, for people buying legal keywords and stuff. And uh, the models that we've been building, you know, we've been looking at 10 distinct bid levels across seven days a week, targeting these different days a week. And that creates a, a tremendous number of combinations for the, the number of bids that we can put out there. And that really just can't be done by individuals. So we use machine learning. Um, we actually uh, used uh, um, it's an end means clustering to do the different day segments and find like times of day and, and cluster them into three different segments. Um, and then uh, targeting those at, with enough, that, that created enough sample size for us to target specific bid optimizations for those segments. Uh, we moved beyond the linear regression into uh, random forest model thanks to uh, some, some interns and, and the staff at the University of San Francisco. They have a tremendous data analytics program and a master's that they're just growing year over year. So I'd highly recommend you guys checking, checking them out and some, some of the students that they're producing are pretty top caliber. I know a lot of folks here are, are, are hiring for data scientists like we are. Um, but yeah, so this is some of the work of some of our students <coughs> to, uh, to really find the best optimization of those ads. Um, the first iteration kind of looked like this. So uh, these day segments, um, are actually not contiguous. So Sunday zero, Sunday one, Sunday two are not in sequence. They're actually binned um, portions of the day that are like each other um, with respect to clicks, impressions, and cost. Um, and so we ran it, uh, and, you know, in our cloud platform. Um, we sent it up to you know, sent it up to the you know we, the uh, the AWS system that we have, and <clears throat> came up with a, a range of bids for each of these days. Um, during the search, uh, we took the median and put it into production. Uh, we ran it again uh, with a couple more iterations of the search, and we actually narrowed these bands and found a, a, pr a pretty highly optimal uh, bid schedule to, to run throughout the day or throughout the week. We ran this last week, uh, and it actually turned out really well. Um, so we're pretty excited to continue down that path of, of finding these bid optimizations. Uh, the future of what we're doing now is to then go even deeper into the funnel, and now we're getting. Uh, information and data and analytics from the cases that we generated two years ago, um, hope to use that to optimize upstream and really look at the, the entire funnel. Um, things like litigation steps and outcomes and settlements, really, um, that's the true offline stuff that's happening way later, um, correlating that upstream. Um, and the, in summary, I guess, uh, you know, big thing that we did, I think, is, is by putting the lawyers, the data scientists, developers, marketers, everybody in the same room with not, not a ton of them, right? So you have like big organizations, there's a lot of information that doesn't get passed through. You know, we put a, a you know, manageable set of folks together to, to solve this problem of creating a repeatable system for uh, law, law firms to acquire new cases. Uh, and we're, we're communicating the same language as much as possible. It's really hard from across those domains to even uh, understand among our team uh, what we're all, we're all saying to each other. But um, that's really uh, kind of big, big picture. We kind of think the biggest uh, takeaway from, from what we've done. And then our, our case generation system, because it goes from click all the way through to settlement, uh, we've been able to span uh, the offline, online domain and create optimizations across the user experience, across what's typically known as a marketing funnel or a sales funnel. Um, and then just some takeaways. Uh, the digital disruption is also happening, um, not just with the big companies that we all read about, but you know the barrier to entry is actually much lower for small law firms and small local businesses and lots of other organizations, government, different organizations are able to take advantage of that, and that has implications for um, for, for a lot of different uh, areas. Um, for modelers, definitely find problems that have systematically been neglected. Um, we talk about the echo chamber. Everybody's. Now, many, many times people get stuck working on the same problems and, and really trying to get that, um, those uh, incremental improvements, but realistically, there's a lot of problems that haven't even been touched, um, and these problems have large uh, industries behind them. Uh, for lawyers, focus on partnering with real disruptors, people who can, are looking at data, not just the popular jingles on the, on the radio. Um, and you know, people with money versus people who actually have expertise and the ability to uh, innovate what you're doing uh, for, for the, next, uh, the next wave. 
um, small, medium-sized businesses. Uh, many of them tell us that they don't know what to do. They like data, but they don't know what to do with it. So just store it now. Uh, store as much of it as possible and try to get to talking to people like us about what they can do. Uh, and then finally for PC, PPC folks, pay-per-click folks like, uh, that are in the industry, uh, focus on that high value, high value region so that you don't have to actually bid up these crazy expensive keywords, like $500 for these legal keywords that you can actually um, get benefits without going, breaking the bank. So, um, that, that's, that's it. Thanks. So our uh, next talk is going to be at uh, 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 ten forty. So please stick around and uh, ask my uh, questions. Uh, and uh, Mike, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I have to say that the idea of binning together non-adjacent time intervals that are like each other, thank you, just solved the problem. I was trying to figure out. What <laughs> so that thing alone was okay. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we'd like to keep the conversation going offline. Um, you know, come up, talk to us. Uh, we're, we're local. So, yep, yeah, thanks.